to join ColoDiscountJuicers.com to do another exciting episode for you. In this episode, actually, I'm just going to be taking along you guys for my juice ride. About t twice, maybe three times a week, and probably more, actually. I'm doing big batches of juice where I juice in bulk to save time. Now, the first thing I'm going to tell you guys is if you have the time to juice every day and juice one cup or one glass or however many ounces you drink in that day, or at that time, that is always better than making juices in bulk and storing it. Unless you're not going to make juice every day. So I'd much rather you guys make juice once a week, or even better yet, twice a week. Make a bunch of juice so you can have juice every single day without having to get out your juicer and juice. Right? Uh, that being said, it's best to juice every single day, like I learned from the Juice Man, and the main reason behind this is because once you take produce and start cutting it, chopping it, and extracting the juice out of it, you expose the nutrients to the air, to oxidation and nutrition of some of the, especially antioxidant vitamins and polyphenols, can diminish and go down over time. In addition, once you break open the surface, break open the cell walls, you're creating more surface area that bacteria loves. And those are the two things that can harm your juices once you make them in large batches. And there's a lots of videos on YouTube that I've watched about storing juices and juicing in bulk juicing. And to me, they're dismal. Like, it's just, in my personal opinion and my belief, it's not good information. It's outdated information. And I'm here to give you guys the best information that I can. Now, why should you listen to me? Well, you don't have to. You could turn this video off now. <laughs> Adios, amigos. <laughs> um, but, you know, here's the thing. I've been juicing since 1995 continuous, continuously until now, and I've been selling juicers online since 1998. I basically juice, I mean, during COVID, I've been juicing three, sometimes four times a week, and I don't just juice one glass. I make huge batches. You could follow me on Instagram, Link is down below in the video comments, if I remember in my description, where I show what I juice. I'll juice literally a gallon to two gallons in one sitting with this very juicer in most cases, although I do use other juicers as well, is, is the disclaimer. And the Omega VSJ843 is my favorite juicer at this time. Link down below to the video on why this machine is my favorite juicer. No, it's not the Nama. I mean, the Nama is good on some respects, but I compare this to the Nama in another video that I'll put link down below. And you can learn why I really like this juicer because it just saves me time. It's a lot more easy and convenient overall. But a lot of the videos that share with you guys how to store your juices or make big bulk juices are just, in my personal opinion, not doing it right, not doing it the best way. I'm here to share with you guys the best and most up-to-date information. You know, people have a lot of old information and they're regurgitating old information. I come up with brand new information that you're literally not going to hear anywhere else because of my number one experience of juicing thousands of pounds of produce over my many years. In addition, I keep up to date with the journal published studies and seeing how, you know, to maximize the nutrition once you store juice. I go to trade shows and see the latest technologies and innovations that allow you to do so. And I bring that to you guys free of charge on my YouTube channel because I want you guys to be successful juicing. I want you guys to become juicers for life and include some juice in your life every single day because juicing simply is the best way to concentrate the beneficial, especially in this video, the green juices or the green vegetables, especially the leafy green vegetables, um, which are the healthiest foods on the entire planet. And my goal is to get literally two pounds of leafy greens in me a day. And some of that is in its juice form because as you guys can see, what's gonna go into this juice is a lot of greens. This allows me to easily consume at least a pound of greens in a single 32 ounce juice that I make. And then later in the day, I'll also eat greens like in with a salad and in with other meals, maybe sometimes it's kale chips or whatnot. But juicing allows you to eat more of the foods that you normally don't eat. Most people don't like vegetables. How often do you even ever eat carrots or ever eat beets? Well, you could easily juice carrots and beets and I have a, another juice I make in, in big batches like this is my carrot beet root juice that I may have another video on one day, but I have a, you know, Instagram pictures where I, you know, disclose 
my different ingredients. So if you guys enjoy my episodes, enjoy the information that I share with you guys, the one way you guys can support me is by making your juicer purchase at discountjuicers.com. This allows me to continue to keep my lights on, to edit my videos, to post these videos, to buy all my produce. So I'm grateful for your guys' support and I want to thank you guys in advance who will support me and I want to thank you guys who have supported me in the past. Supporting me is like supporting that lo small local organic farmer that is growing food near you so that you guys could eat. It allows me to continue to make these educational videos. Big box stores, let's face it, they don't care about you. My goal is I don't care what brand juicer I sell you really. I care that you start juicing and are successful at it and I'm going to do everything I can to share my tips and to make it happen for you guys. In addition, you know, I am a liaison, so the warranty is always covered by the manufacturer, but should you have difficulty getting the manufacturer to, you know, provide warranty service for legitimate warranty claims, and you purchase for me and you try to contact them first and they don't take care yet, let me know. You know, I'll ensure that your warranty claims are taken care of because it's important for me to juice. Now understand we are in COVID times and sometimes the companies take a little bit longer than others to respond and react and take care of the customers. And I do know which companies are better and which companies are worse at customer service because I get lots of feedback and also I'm a customer myself and I actually have to call different companies during COVID times to get service on some of my juicers. Um, and get them repaired myself. So right off the bat, I will say a few things that you will learn in this video that you're not going to hear about anywhere else. Number one is I'm going to talk about getting good deals on produce. I'm going to say how, how do you get good deals on bulk produce. I'm going to talk about how to store the juices properly, and this is not just getting it in a glass bottle and filling it up to the brim and topping it off. That's like 70s. That's like information for the 70s. There is new technology now that will easily allow you to store your juices uh, made in a slow juicer for up to five days, maybe even a week if you're pushing it. You know, you gotta go that far. Um, also, I'll be showing you guys the best containers to store your juices in, the best produce that you guys should be juicing, more importantly, the best juicer to use, as well as some of the accessories that I use to juice myself, and also some of the techniques to juice in the juicer. In addition, I'll also be showing you guys the best way to store your juice that is not often talked about. I mean, these are all advanced level tips in my opinion because I haven't heard them from anywhere else. I've pieced together this component, this component from all the many years I've been doing this, looking into the science and the research to figure out how can I do this the best way possible and share with you guys. You know, not only do I want to share with you guys, but I want to do it myself. So, you know, I juice copious amounts of fruits and vegetables, mostly vegetables, on a regular basis and drink them. You know, every day I basically drink um, two uh, 32 ounce juices, I'm not going to say you guys have to juice that much or drink that much juice. How much juice you drink is personally up to you, but you know my goal is to get as many of these uh, vegetables in as I can and my first juice is a green juice that I'll be making today. The second juice is a root juice and actually I make another juice um, is, is normally my first juice which is actually a turmeric ginger shot which I do have a video about. I'll put a link down below to that video. Now the next thing I want to say before I get into the video is I want you guys to not make the same recipe every single week, right? That's very important. As much as celery has certain nutrients, right? If you only ever drink celery juice, you might get all the benefits from celery, which might be really great or not. <laughs> but you're going to miss out on the nutrients in the romaine lettuce hearts. You're going to miss out on the nutrients from kale, anti-cancer. Uh, properties, anti-aging properties. You're going to miss out on cucumbers. If you're making the, you know, famous lemon ginger blast, right? Or a reboot juice every single day, every single week, week in, week out. That's great. You're getting, you're loading up on the phytonutrients in those specific produce items, but you're missing out on the fiber and the phytonutrients and the vitamins and minerals and antioxidants in other produce that's out there. You know, when's the last time you drank Jicama juice. I drank jicama juice earlier today, actually. Jicama is one amazing vegetable. So I want you guys to do not discriminate against your vegetables that you juiced. And I want you guys to juice a wide variety. And even if you make the same base, like say you're, this is my main base. You know, my main base is either, you know, celery, cucumbers, and romaine hearts. Sometimes I'll add in kale. Sometimes I won't if I don't have it in my garden. Sometimes I can't get a good deal on celery or they don't have good celery. That's organic, so then I'll just use these two. Sometimes I don't use any of these, and I just use straight romaine hearts. Sometimes I'll use straight cucumber, which is really rare. Sometimes I'll just do straight celery. 
and I don't often do straight kale because that can be pretty hardcore. All right. Um, so I want you guys always to rotate your juices. That's very important. That's something. Another thing that people will not tell you. This is like an advanced tip because most people just follow the same recipe day in day out. And that's great, you're loading up on the nutrients in those specific vegetables, but not others. So before we get into juicing, I want to talk, John, where do you get all your produce? You know, so I go to a number of stores to get my produce. And the first thing is if you guys are bulk juicing in bulk or bulk juicing or juicing in big batches, you, you will need a lots of produce. So, you know, my, my fridges are constantly full and then they get empty and then they get full and then they get empty because I'm like, when I see good deals all load up and you know, some produce will keep pretty long. That's a different video. Um, and I, I travel around. So, for example, you know, some of these English cucumbers that are organic, I got literally at the 99 only store um, or actually a Mexican market near me. They were organic for 66 cents or 33 cents each, which is an amazing deal. I got some of the cucumbers, the standard market, more cucumbers at Winco Foods, I think for like 68 cents. These romaine hearts were purchased actually at Costco. They are organic. Um, also, Smart and Final has a good deal on romaine hearts. All this kale, I paid zero for because <laughs> I just fresh picked it out of my garden. And it's another tip, advanced tip is have a garden if you want to be a bulk juicer because you will always have, you know, produce to pick from your garden that you can't juice. The celery here was actually from Natural Grocers. Uh, it's 79 cents a pound, which actually I like buying celery when it's that cheap per pound because you could select the celery. And if you notice, I have really nice celery because I selected it, you know, per piece. I picked all the ones that are nice, deep colored green. I have other videos on how to select your produce for juicing to get the best stuff. But yeah, basically you shop around, you know, all this produce that you're seeing here today is organic. Oh, and then in addition, I have a some Meyer lemons uh, from Natural Grocers, I think around about a buck 19 per pound, which are quite a good deal. Uh, normally I may not put lemons in the juice, but today I am for a very important reason that you will learn in a little bit. So yeah, shop around for your produce. When you see something on sale, like, oh, cucumbers are on sale at this store this week, buy a bunch of them if you store them properly. Cucumbers could easily last for one or maybe two weeks if you store them super good. In your fridge but the other thing is if you have a lot of cucumbers and they're going bad guess what that's gonna be what's in your juice this week because you got more cucumbers are going bad actually these are all the cucumbers I had because they were going bad if you notice they're cut up and sometimes there's little pieces cut out of them because there's little bad spots in there but that's all right your juice don't care if there are some bad spots that you cut out now the other thing I will say is I want you guys to shop around at warehouse club stores you know Costco you know is where I got this uh, ro organic romaine lettuce um, you could bet, get like organic baby greens, which are a fairly good price, but I like the romaine because the romaine hearts, um, depending on the Costco and, and, the, and the week, it could be from $3.50 to $4.50 or maybe even $4.99. And in general, the bags weigh approximately, well, four pounds if you're lucky, maybe three and a half pounds. So that's like basically about a buck a pound for romaine hearts. And I feel that's a good deal. Plus, I love just straight romaine heart juice. In addition, Costco and Sam's Club both will have organic carrots, usually for around 60 to 70 cents per pound, depends on where in the country you live. So I like to stock up at those stores for certain items. Sam's Club has a better hothouse grown cucumbers than Costco, but Costco has organic ones and Costco generally has cheap organic ginger that you guys could buy in bulk. So basically I travel around to different retail stores to buy produce. Always checking the sale papers, the ads. I go out shopping, you know, a couple times a week uh, to see what good deals I could get. Actually, today I got organic strawberries for a buck ninety-nine at the ninety-nine only store. Any case, uh, the other tip that I would give you guys, if you guys are in a major city like Los Angeles, like San Francisco, right? Uh, they have what's called wholesale produce terminals that you, as an individual, could go down to. Now, some states have produce terminals, like Illinois. I went to the one in Chicago, but you have to have like a business license to get in there. And they didn't have as good of deals as the ones I went to in like LA and San Francisco that you could easily go to and buy produce by the case. In addition, you know, some organic wholesalers, even just regular standard conventional wholesalers of produce will sell to the end user direct if you buy, you know, a minimum order, which is usually a case. You know, there's distributors in Los Angeles. If you don't want to walk the produce terminal, you can just call them up, put your order in and then come and pick it up. It will call and they'll charge your credit card and you could grab your produce and, and go away and save lots of money that way. Now, of course, I'm not going to get into how to store the produce once you get it. We're just talking about sourcing the produce. Uh, generally, I recommend buying the produce, and once you get a whole bunch of produce in, 
you know, like go shopping Saturday morning, come home, wash it all, and this is all pre-washed, and then I'm just going to now juice it so that actually never even has to go into my fridge, you know, so that'd probably be the best way, and then you could actually just put, you know, jars of juice in your fridge afterwards that are going to take a lot less space than all this produce. So aside from getting the produce, and I always encourage you guys to buy and support organic agriculture whenever possible, although it's not the ideal solution, you know, home growing your own produce is, which I also teach on my gardening channel, um, it is better solution than conventional produce that is using, you know, synthetic pesticides and synthetic fertilizers. That is not how plants should be grown in the first place, in my opinion, and it could be, it could produce imbalanced food uh, in my belief. All right, so enough about talking about the produce. What I'm going to talk about now is the juicer that you're going to juice to juice in bulk, right? I've seen plenty of videos where people are using a high-speed juicer running super fast. It's like a Breville or many other different brand names that run at a high speed. You know, while these do not heat the juice, like many juice juicers and people selling juicers and selling cold-pressed juices would say, high-speed juicers heat the juice. That's not true according to my video. And my testing, put a link down below, um, while it doesn't heat the juice, it does oxidize the juice and add lots of air into the juice to heck, which is totally crazy, and that lowers the nutrition. So I do not recommend you guys using a high-speed juicer to juice in bulk, because once you, you know, cram air into the juices, the juice oxidizes and goes bad even faster because those antioxidants are in the juice to preserve the juice for later, you know. So that's the first step, get the right juicer. The right juicer is a slow juicer, and I'm not gonna get into all the different various slow juicers and the best one. I will put a link down below this video to a video I made on you know, the juicer that makes the highest nutrition juice, which you know, frankly is the Green Star Pro or Green Star Elite juicers. After that, maybe like something like the Pure or the Norwalk, maybe. And then I would say something like the auger style juicers is what I use. I like the auger style juicers because generally they're quicker and they work very, very well. And also they're easy to clean and the least hassle for me to use. And it allows me to do continuous usage instead of having to like, you know, grind up produce, press it, grind, press. I'm just putting in produce, the pulp's coming out, the juice is coming out and I'm ch chopping and it's, it's auto feeding. So I'm not having to use any kind of pusher to make it happen and you, to learn how to use a vertical auger juicer, check the link down below. Juice like a pro in any vertical slow juicer. If you do get a vertical juicer, you got to use it the way I say or you could be in a heap of trouble, as my dad used to say. Now aside from using a slow juicer, I want you guys to get a juicer that could hang, you know, <laughs> with all the juicing you'll be doing, right? Many inexpensive juicers made in China that may, may be available in a big box store, which I've made videos on why you probably shouldn't get a juicer from China. They could have really short 10 minute duty cycles. What's a 10 minute duty cycle? Some of you guys know what duty cycles are, but basically 10 minute duty cycle means you can run the juicer for 10 minutes and after 10 minutes it's gonna overload, overheat and shut itself off or you may cause damage to the motor because it's a cheap Chinese motor, right? And those are not the juicers you wanna do juice in bulk. Most you know, standard juicers that are made in Korea that I represent you know, has a 30 minute duty cycle. And that's that's their duty cycle that the manufacturer says, oh, you could use this machine for 30 minutes. That's what we guarantee. That's all we're gonna tell you. And you know, I know because I've tested beyond 30 minutes because I juice in bulk. I've used all, all the major brand juicers that I sell at discount juicers to juice in bulk. And I know that some of them, they all work 30 minutes, guaranteed. <laughs> um, some of them will go maybe 45 minutes and some of them can even go like an hour straight. Not that I recommend that and not that the manufacturer does either, but I could tell you that I regularly use this an hour straight on a regular basis without any incidents. It doesn't shut off on me, it just works. I've had other brand juicers that will not go that long. And that's one of the reasons why the VSJ is my favorite juicer. It's just a solid motor. I mean, if it was commercially certified, you know, this could be used in a juice bar, but it's not commercially certified. Although I have sold the juice bars that use like several VSJs because at some point they will overheat on you and you will have to swap it out with the next one. So they'll just buy two of these instead of one of the super expensive, you know, Kuvings, uh, you know, commercial juices that can literally run 24 hours straight. I personally don't believe that, you know, you're going to need something that could run 24 hours straight for home use. But, you know, that's just me and I tend to be a bit frugal and actually I really like how the VSJ 
works myself over uh, even the commercial Kuvings. All right, so I think without further ado, I got to get into juicing because I'm actually quite thirsty and I haven't had my green juice yet today. You know, so like I never really run by a recipe or amounts so that I got to juice this many. I kind of look in my fridges because I have several fridges with produce in there and I'm like, oh, I got to use all the cucumbers because they're going bad. And I got about eight heads of celery in there. I'm going to grab four of them. And I had like a couple packs of romaine hearts. So I got uh, 10 of them. So I got like, uh, I don't know, about six cucumbers in there. I got uh, four romaine hearts and I got like 10 heads of romaine organic lettuce and I just went out and picked a whole bunch of greens that I needed to pick because they're getting large out of my garden including Siberian kale, dinosaur kale, curly kale, I think I even got some uh, broccoli leaves in there and maybe some purple kale as well. You know, so I, I don't really have a recipe but I grabbed all these things, you know, so especially in a vertical juicer, it's always best if you have different textures, you know, it wouldn't be good to juice like a bulk juice with all greens with nothing else. The juicer really likes the soft texture of cucumbers, the little mushy texture of the romaine hearts and the, you know, the little stems of the greens that are pre-cut and the, you know, the, 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 the fiber in the celery and it all works better. So what I'll be doing next, oh, and then I'm also gonna juice one lemon, and that is another tip I wanna give you guys. If you wanna store your juices, always best to add lemon to it or add some kind of acid. You could juice some lime in there, you could juice some, you know, rainpour lime or, you know, different kinds of, uh, you know, um, maybe kumquats, they're kind of a little bit acid, but you wanna get some acid in there, and if all else fails, you could add some vinegar in there. <laughs> I don't think I was going to taste good myself, and I wouldn't do it. Um, but, you know, you want to get the acid level, uh, the pH lower, which will, you know, encourage a better preservation. The two main enemies that you will have and why your juice will go bad is, number one, degradation of nutrients. Minerals probably aren't going to degrade for any big part, but the antioxidants and oxygen-sensitive, uh, you know, phytonutrients will degrade over time. So, number one, you're going to be losing nutrition and number two um, bacterial growth can increase so that's important to wash your produce properly before juicing you know if you want to get really anal and you want to store your juice the longest you would skin everything that you're juicing because more bacteria could live on the skin um, you know like peel your carrots I don't go that far because you know while you will get, gain maybe a little bit more storage and especially if the produce is not looking good and there's notably things grown on it um, you will lose valuable phytonutrients that are in or on or under the skin because a lot of nutrition is in the skin. So, you know, everything in life is a pro and con, and you guys need to determine what you guys are going to do. I like to juice as many skins as possible unless it's bad, you know, then I will cut it out. So, yeah, so as time goes on and as you create more surface area, you know, the, the bacteria counts could grow rampant, and it actually they could just basically turn your juice bad and or you could get sick or food poisoning and all this kind of stuff. That being said, if your produce is pretty much safe, oh, and it could grow mold and other things, that's why I'm gonna show you guys at the end how to store the juice properly so that it doesn't go bad as quickly, um, you know, as most people, you know, store their juice by just capping it off in a glass bottle. I will have a future episode where I really dive into some of the science on storing juices and how long they can be stored safely according to many different subjects and according to my own personal opinion, you know, I drank a juice yesterday that was like two weeks old that was stored in the fridge under vacuum. And that was kind of like iffy. I'm like, oh, this definitely has a taste change off. I didn't get sick. I'm still here. <laughs> but, you know, it probably would have been better to only drink it after seven days. But I experiment a lot. And sometimes I forget about a juice that's been in my fridge. But here's the thing. If you store the juices the way I say, making a slow juicer, like I say, you know, I would easily say five days. And if you get a twin gear juicer, that will up the antioxidant content and phytonutrient content. Maybe I'd go with seven days, and you know that's the maximum. I'd say best is three days, so that's why I would encourage you guys to do juice prep two times a week, maybe like Wednesdays, and maybe like uh, you know Saturdays or Sundays would be the best to do two times a week. Um, but if you got to do once, like Sunday, just do Sunday for the whole week, you know. I mean, that'd be, that'd, be, that'd be acceptable also just because it's better to drink juice even that's seven days old instead of grab a soda. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about the right equipment to have to juice in bulk. So number one, you're going to need, you know, maybe uh, different containers. Like I use some wire baskets and different containers to hold some of the pre-prep produce. In addition, I have a nice large cutting board as well. I'm going to lose my 
romaine, and a nice uh, ceramic knife. Now these are not totally essential, and I will put a link to the video I down made down below with essential juicing accessories, which include also my knife, my cutting board, as well as a nice large catch cup. You don't want to be juicing into a big pot that has Teflon coating in it like I've seen some people on YouTube do. You know, I like to only juice into glass. This is basically a, a 2 liter or 2,000 milliliter or 2 quart, 8 cup um, anchor hawking measuring uh, jar. Uh, Pyrex also makes one like this available at your local big box store. And then I personally use a sieve. There are pros and cons to sieves. And I like to use a sieve because I don't like all the texture in my juice. Although, if there is some of the inside of fiber in your juice, your juice actually may store longer. You know, for me, it's a preference, and I'm not a big fan of juicing, drinking juice that has, like, grit in it. And the other thing is, I'll, I will say, is that even when you're juicing, you're keeping some of the fiber, the soluble fiber that is soluble in water. And in addition, my diet is not completely juices. I eat plenty of fruits, vegetables, and some nuts and seeds and other plant foods along the way to get plenty of fiber, including mushrooms, which has some really cool fiber in there if you look into it. The other thing is that you will want to have the proper collection cups and maybe even an extra one, I have an extra one to the side in case I fill this one up uh, so that I could continue juicing. Um, and usually I use the catch cups that come with the juicer and then I use my own collection container to catch the juice as it comes out. I guess with that, I'm gonna get into juicing. So I'm gonna go over maybe starting to juice and my approach and how I'm gonna do it and then I'm gonna explain it and then I'm just basically gonna fast forward this video to the end to when I got the juice, pouring out the juice into the jars and showing you guys how to save them properly. Uh, for the most storage light. So the first step is to pre-prep your produce. It's very important in a vertical juicer to pre-prep your produce. You know, things like the celery does need to be pre-cut into quarter inch, or better yet, eighth inch pieces, quarter inch minimum. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut off the bottom here, and we're just gonna take the knife and cut this into like uh, eighth inch slices to the best of my ability. If I get to a quarter inch slices, that's fine. This is really important. You know, I see people on YouTube jamming in whole celery stalks into vertical juicers, and when I see that, I cringe because <laughs> I know what's going to happen. It's going to cause issues. They're not going to be able to take their juicer apart, and the juicer's not going to work well for them. And honestly, I'm just going to tell you guys what is required to get the best results out of your juicer. If you want to follow me and what I do and get my same results, great. And if you want to do your own technique, you know, that's up to you, and you want to have problems. I just want you guys to be successful and also too I don't want to have problems when I'm juicing either So as you guys can see we basically got all this celery uh, chopped up Now the other thing besides chopping up the celery what we will need to do is we will also need to chop up some of the kale here So we're going to grab some of the kale out and I'll probably just do this in little batches sometimes I'll chop everything and have it in little bowls Sometimes I'll chop it in, kind of add it in as I go so we're just going to rip this kale in half. So I got the stems with the greens, very important. You know, save your stems if you're making kale chips to juice the stems. Stems are very rich in actually um, antioxidants even, but more importantly the minerals where the, the stems concentrate minerals such as the celery, which is actually a stock vegetable or a stem vegetable. So once again, we are cutting up all the kale into quarter inch um, or eight inch pieces optimally as well so we could have now have a pile of the kale as well as the celery all right so the next thing luckily i've already pre-prepped the cucumbers so i just basically sliced them in half and then these will easily drop in the juicer and the last thing we'll need to prep is oops the romaine hearts so on the romaine hearts i basically just cut off the funky bottom like i did on the celery and the romaine hearts when they're especially this small which is really nice i could just cut these guys in half and this whole half will literally just fit into the feed chute of the juicer that will definitely save me some time. Now, when juicing in the vertical juicer, you should always rotate your produce. Don't just put all the lettuce, all the cucumbers, all the kale, and then all the celery. You wanna put a handful of, maybe put like one cucumber, you know, some romaine hearts, follow that with some kale, and then follow with some, um, you know, chopped celery. And then, uh, you know, repeat that until you're out of produce. That way, you're gonna give the juicer different textures, Different textures will eject out of the juicer better or worse, and by combining all the textures, the machine's just gonna work better. So at this point, I think we're gonna go ahead and speed up this video, and we're gonna come back at you when I'm done juicing.
All right, I want to stop right there and let you guys know that I'm maybe about halfway done juicing. I got, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five romaine hearts left to juice. I still got lots of cucumbers. I got two heads of celery and some of the, maybe half my kale left. And already I've juiced uh, 1,800 milliliters of juice. Uh, my sieve is going to be literally swimming in the juice that's been sieved already. So what happens at this point is I like to shut off and we're going to grab our jars. So my next tip is right here, right now, it's important. I want you guys to store your juice in the jar of a single serving size for you. I don't know what size that will be. I have different jars for different purposes and different juices. So for example, if I'm making my turmeric ginger shots, that goes in the, my eight ounce jar that I fill up to like five ounces personally. And my normal juice is stored in a 32 ounce mason jar that I fill up to maybe like eight or 900 milliliters. Otherwise I can't pull a vacuum on it, which will be the other final tip at the end of this video. So you guys can see. So you know, a bad way to store juice would be like, oh, I'm just gonna put everything in here and then when I need to ju drink it, I'll unseal the vacuum and then pour out half and then reseal it again. That's not good. We want to keep the juice either made or right under vacuum as soon as possible and then get it into the fridge, which will be another tip at the end, um, and store it until you're ready to drink it and remove the vacuum and then drink the whole thing in one sitting. So for that reason, you know, you should maybe get an 8-ounce jar, you can get a 16-ounce jar, you get a 24-ounce jar or a 32-ounce jar. Actually, I'm re I really like the 24 ounce jars because the I find the glass is a little bit thicker so they tend to break less and also I really like how there's uh, no um, kind of shoulder on the glass so it's a lot easier to get in there and clean especially some of the pigmented juices all right so I'm not going to be using any of the small ones today because to me <laughs> these are for kids <laughs> and uh, I will be using uh, 32 ounce mason jars uh, today so I think the first round is, I'd like to basically, you could just, the best way to do it would be to just to store, put you know all this into two jars, vacuum seal and put it in the fridge. But I like to have a nice mixture so that all my juices taste about equivalent and have about the same ratios. But to each their own. <laughs> maybe one day I'll just uh, maybe try to even more evenly portion it and be happy with you know the differences in the juices when I might add, you know, this batch might have a little more kale than the than the last batch. The other thing I will do is I'll sieve out the juice, uh, get some of the extra foam out, which is actually quite imperative, especially for the next step. And then all the foam and the pulp, then I just basically tap back into the juicer um, to get me a little bit larger, uh, more extraction from. And after I tap that fairly clean, I will then get my canning funnel and put that on top. And then I'll basically pour my juice in um, I'll put about, I'll fill up like a, a quarter of this in each jar, so I got like, uh, maybe I'll have to put almost, almost up to halfway up to each jar. And I'll shake the sieve down, oh, that's probably that much, and then we'll go to the next one. Alright, close enough for government work, and uh, let's go ahead and get back to juicing. Oh my god, so it looks like we're almost done juicing here, and maybe it's uh, been, uh, I don't know, maybe like 45 minutes, I'm not exactly sure of the time, because it doesn't really matter, because I'm just juicing, and however long it takes is however long it takes, just going at the speed of the juicer, not trying to use a pusher, not trying to cram stuff in there, 
and I am ending on the pre-cut celery. Um, in this recipe, actually, the celery is the thing that you want to probably end up pushing in last. That'll ensure that all the more valuable kale goes through. And if we use cucumber last, it's a little bit softer texture. And also, you know, the best item to put in last is like things that are diced up small so that they tend to get worked through the juicer more effectively, all right? And it looks like we made about our third pitcher um, that gets filled up to maybe like 900 milliliters before it starts making our uh, sieve there swim. So it looks like we're almost up to the level. And then we will go ahead and pour it on off. And then I'm going to show you guys actually how to store the juices the best way possible. All right, so we're just about done juicing. All the juice came out. And let's go ahead and uh, I like to dump the sieve into the pulp catch bin. And then we're going to go ahead and evenly distribute all our juices into our catch cups. Now, using the right juicer is very important to make sure you get a slow juicer so it doesn't oxidize the juice that much. That being said, you know, this still does put a little bit of air into the juice. And I'm going to show you guys in a second how to remove or de-aerate the juice. This is totally next level. I've talked about this before but never made a video. This is the first video I'm making on this right now for you guys to show the guys the advancements that I've come up with that you can only do with certain tools and I love different tools all right all right so we're filling all these babies up and we got seven total quart jars that I didn't fill up all the way because we were pulling a vacuum and it can be problematic if you fill it up too way too too high because you will actually end up sucking out You'll end up sucking out some of the juice out of the lid, which is not a good thing. All right, look, I didn't <laughs> didn't evenly distribute it that well. All right, that's all right. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and maybe pour a little bit of each into this one, and we're going to come back at you when I got these all leveled off. So now I'm going to show you guys the most important step to storing your juices. Unlike many videos online that say, oh, take your jar, fill it up to the brim so there's no airspace, and then cap it off, right? I'm not going to do that. Maybe in the 1970s or the 1980s when I learned about removing the airspace and there's a reason you want to have minimal airspace in there because the air causes the juice to oxidize and lower in nutrition. But even better than putting no air in it, and I've tested it both ways, right, is to suck out the air so that there's no oxygen or very little oxygen in there in the first place using a vacuum pump. So there are many solutions. I have about two other videos on YouTube showing how to vacuum save your juices with different, you know, pumps and uh, vacuum blenders and whatnot. And the way that I do it now is I use the strongest vacuum pump that I found for kitchen use. That's actually uh, assembled in the United States. It's actually by Blendtec. And this is their pump. This is a, a beta test version. So this item is not, not available yet. Um, it will be out really soon, although it'll set you back a pretty penny, but it's going to come with all the different lids that you guys need to pull a vacuum on your juices and stir your juices. It's literally going to be your vacuum stored solution for juices and smoothies as well as other fruits and vegetables that you could store in mason jars easily and quickly in glass. Okay, so here's the thing. If you guys don't want to get the deluxe kit, which is the way I recommend storing your juices because it pulls more vacuum, the more vacuum you can pull out, um, you know, and the more air you could pull out out of the juice as it's sitting, the longer it's going to store, right? The inexpensive option are these guys. These guys are available at Amazon, um, like uh, they're 12 bucks for a set of four lids plus a little hand pump that is really, in my opinion, inadequate. Um, this is actually called the Soul Get Lid Seal Vacuum Storage. They're actually made for fermentation. So how you would normally do is you'd put this on, then you'd use a little vacuum pump to hand pump it. Actually, my par parents have the vacuum pump when I make them juices they can repump their stuff which I don't necessarily recommend but I'm going to use the blend tech vacuum pump with this lid so how this works is you put this uh, vacuum pump which is really powerful and, sh and this is protected from sucking juice up into there because you have this long little adapter uh, tube and should you suck juice in there that's all right it'll suck juice in and there's a little output thing that'll kick the juice out and make a mess on your counter so that you will not ruin the pump that's very important right uh, most all the pumps actually I've seen don't have this evacuation feature and you will ruin the pump in addition this pulls more vacuum than other vacuum pumps that I've tested to date so we're just gonna go ahead and put this on and press this button and there's a graphical um, 
um, you know, little LEDs on there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's basically pumping out the juice. And if we look very carefully at the jar, and I don't know if you guys can see that, but this pump is so strong that if you guys look very carefully, you can see air bubbles from the juice uh, evacuating out of the top and making this actually more bubbly. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera. Um, but yeah, we're basically pulling air, dissolved air, out of the juice so that your juice will store longer. This is surely advanced stuff. I've never seen this explained or on a video. And when I was using the inadequate vacuum pumps previously, uh, you know, um, I never saw this happen. There's one manual pump that I use that is no longer available that I'm also able to suck so hard that it literally sucks the dissolved oxygen out of the juice. And you guys can see there's more foam there and then it shut off. So uh, now that this is completely under vacuum and you can just press this little button and then it'll actually release the vacuum. Now this is a plastic lid which I'm not a big fan of and that's why I like the 100% stainless steel lids by Blendtec that will be out probably within the next 30 days. This also has a silicone um, little seal that you can remove so you can easily clean underneath this. And so how this works is you're just going to basically screw this on the top and then you're going to go ahead and put this little tube over the top and press the button again. And the one issue I have with this pump is that it walks literally, bye bye, across the table <laughs> and it's a little bit loud, but it, it sure does suck, I'll tell you. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you guys can see the air bubbles rushing out of the juice onto the top. You know, when I made a previous video showing how to vacuum store juice, my pump was not strong enough to pull air, but this is pulling significant air out of the juice. In general, slow juicers will put some air in the juice, high speed juicers put a lot more, and even a pure juicer or Norwalk style, you know, will put very little um, air into the juice as it's being created due to the way it operates. Uh, that being said, I don't believe those style juicers um, you know, extract the most phytonutrients personally. So you guys can see literally that's why we didn't fill this mason jar to the top because we have a foam layer and this foam layer would get sucked through the vacuum and then make a mess everywhere. Um, sometimes I will double pump and I'll just do a second round to make sure I get all the air out. That's the best way to do it. And you guys can see we have a nice foam head. Over time sitting in your fridge this will dissipate and then you will no longer see it as the bubbles basically will pop and turn back into the juice. In this way, we're moving all the excess oxygen out of the juice so that your juices will store the longest in the fridge. It is imperative that you use the strongest vacuum you can. You guys may have an auto shop and have a different vacuum pumps that may pull a strong vacuum. You know, I haven't dealt with all those. I know that the Blendtec is the most easiest pump because what I'll do is I'll hit this on and it runs for, I don't know, a minute or so and I'll start cleaning the juicer up. And when this is done, I'll come over and switch it off to the next juice, the next juice, and the next juice until I'm all done and I usually just double pump to make sure I get all the air out. Uh, this ensures my juice will store the longest um, and not be able to grow um, you know, bacteria in there because we are removing the excess oxygen and also we're not going to have excess oxidation. And then when you pull this off, you can pull this off and if, I don't know if you guys can see that but the lid is literally concave because it sucked the lid in into the container. And you know, this is basically a de-aerated juice, okay? So I'm gonna do that to all these. We'll do that off camera to save you guys some time. But you definitely wanna vacuum store your juice with the strongest vacuum pump as possible. Um, you know, and, uh, and then the other thing that's very important that most people don't tell you, and they never will, because they don't know, but I know, you wanna store your juices as cold as possible, right? You don't wanna freeze them, because then you're gonna, <laughs> that's not gonna be good you want to store them as cold as possible. So my goal is to have my fridge between 33 degrees and 36 degrees or maybe 35 degrees. It's hard to kind of keep my fridge balanced with the stupid dial control. I actually have multiple therm thermometers in my fridge because the front top will be one temperature. I think it's currently like 38 or 39 and the back right where the you know compressor and the cold air comes out is like 32 and sometimes my stuff will freeze in there. So I try to keep it as cold as possible at the back without it freezing and then whatever it is at the top and all my juice is always stored in the back of my fridge near the coldest so they will remain the coldest. The coldest temperature will preserve more nutrition. Now the better thing I could do aside from this and the clear mason jars is they make amber 
mason jars, <laughs> you know, that are like that glass smoke color or whatever, those would be better and even better than that if they had like the vial live or the purple or black glass jars. You want to keep the jars, you know, dark and under vacuum and cold for the longest storage. These are things you will literally not hear anywhere else. And that's basically how I juice in bulk. I got to clean up all this stuff, get all this stuff in the fridge. And yo, know, and I want to try one of these juices. Actually, always when I, I bulk juice, I make juice for the next day. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six days of juice because it's just me drinking it. I don't have family. <laughs> I'm currently single. Um, I want to have a family one of these days. And then I'll, I'll drink one today. So this is my juice, and I'm going to tell you guys how it tastes. Mmm. Yeah, I don't normally add lemon in there, but I did that for the video today because really that will ensure the best storage ability. Normally I omit the lemon because I don't like lemon in my green juice. It's interesting. I mean, this is a good, it's a good solid juice, and you know I'll be glad I get to drink this for the next uh, seven days straight. Hopefully in this episode you guys learned how to bulk juice and make juice in big batches to save you guys some time so that you guys could juice literally for a week using the best techniques and tips possible to save you guys money and have a highest quality juice so that you can guys can get the benefits from juicing. Whether you want to get weight loss or whether you want to gain more energy, whether you're trying to rebuild your health, have a health opportunity that you will overcome, you know, making juice in bulk and storing it can be the ticket so that you juice, drink, you drink juice every single day. But of course, better than that is to make it and drink it as soon as it's made for the best results. I will have upcoming videos with other things you can do to your juice after you make it to even in increase some of the phytonutrients, which is totally crazy because you're not going to hear it anywhere else. And make so make sure you click that subscribe button right down below. If you guys enjoyed this episode, hey, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And more importantly, please, guys, you guys have a wide reach. Be sure to share this video with others that are still not storing juices the best way possible. So this information gets out to people. They can store the juices under vacuum, de-aerate their juices, store it cold, use the proper juicer that could deal with making large bombs. I, I literally made almost uh, uh, two gallons of juice today, and I want all you guys to be able to do that if you guys want to and have the best techniques and tips because there's too much rhetoric and misinformation out there in the juicing world in my opinion, and people are spreading knowledge that is not the most latest information, which is cool. You know, I didn't know all this information when I started either, and I wish I did, and now you guys do, thanks to me. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on my new and upcoming episodes that come out every five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up or what new two juicers I'll be comparing or what new two ju juicing tips I'll be laying on you guys so you guys can have a more efficient juicing lifestyle. Um, also, make sure to click the bell so you get notified as my new videos come out. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge of 500 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel dedicated to comparing and contrasting all the different major brand juicers and even vacuum blenders and sharing with you guys my tips so the guys are the best juicers possible and get the best results. So with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for YouTube visitors.